right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox and this week I'll be showing you how to generate really fast and easy to use PBR materials using a couple free programs. One of which is called Materialize. You can generate stuff like this and then bring it inside of Octane for Cinema 4D uh, and set it up all nice and pretty. So if you're interested in this, let's get going. Okay, first and foremost, if you do not know what a PBR texture is, it is a really tasty hipster beer called Paps Blue. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, PBR materials or texturing. I'll just say what CG Hero says right here. PBR texturing is the process of creating digital two-dimensional images which store surface color information and will be projected onto a 3D object. So it's just rendering and texturing using a set of 3D images. And also it's this. Um, what we're going to use is a free program called Materialize by Bounding Box Software. Now this is only for PC, so sorry Mac users, but you can go to the download, download this, it's super handy. There are programs like Substance Creator that can do this way more extreme and to a finer level of detail, but I think this is really handy if you just want a down and dirty PBR material based off of an image you have. Now, speaking of image creation, this can be anything as long as it is really naturally and evenly lit. So if you're taking photos, cloudy days are your friends. I, however, you may have seen a previous video, used an AI bot called Midjourney. And I just started typing in stuff like stylized seamless 2D textures of hand-drawn roof tiles. And it gave me something like this. So I have been messing around with this which even furthers the ease of doing this. I did not have to do anything but type in that sentence and I was given this image. Now it's not a perfectly seamless texture, but we can fix that inside of this tool. Um, but it's pretty cool to see this working. So again, highly, highly recommend checking out Mid Journey. It is not a private beta any longer. Okay, so from there, I'm just going to do quick overviews of this stuff. I basically open Materialize, and as you can see, I brought in that one image and I basically made these others from that and was able to export them. So the way you see this when you open this program, I'm gonna clear all texture maps. You basically get this weird cube frame system. And the first thing you wanna do is go to diffuse map and hit the little O for open. So I'm going to hit open. I'm going to choose my image. You put it on here. It's just a flat image and then from there you want to create a height map which is basically your displacement map and i don't need to hit open and find a new one since i already have this one loaded i'm just going to hit create and it kind of gives you this cool side by side so you can see what you're generating you won't see any uh anything happening to this so far in here you can mess with all of these tools you can do default, details, displace, any of these options. It kind of gives you some base sets you can work with. Um, let's just stick with default for these just to show you how this works. I tweaked the crap out of these to get a place I liked personally, um, but just to show you how this works. So once you're happy with how your height map works, say set as height map. And so that will now put it inside of here. And if you click show full material, I can now see how this is reacting as a material. And down here I can choose if I want it to be a plane, if I want it to be a cube, cylinder, etc. So it's really handy to check this out. Um, but as you can see, if I go to plane, you can see I've gotten some nice depth going on here. It's not perfect, but that's where a lot of those tweaking values come into play, you know, changing the contrast, etc but I'm getting somewhere nice. Uh, from there, I want a normal map. So I'm just going to hit create on normal map. It's going to basically look at the two sets of images I've made and tries to approximate what it thinks I would like. Again, you can do a lot of stuff here by saying, okay, I want it like way more crispy. I want all these details to come out. Let's just try that. So I'm gonna hit set normal map, go back to show full material. And now you can see now that we have a normal map, the light is actually interacting with this and it's brought the height out even more on top of our displacement map that's happening. Another thing you can do over here, um, kind of on these base settings, when you don't have a material selected, um, you can do parallax displacement and kind of make it more or less extreme. This doesn't do anything to the final output of the texture. It just allows you to see 
how far you can potentially push this when you bring it into a 3D program. Same with like ambient occlusion power once you have an ambient occlusion map set. So I'm gonna maybe knock this down to like 0.5. See how I'm going. Um, this is like way more shiny and funny than I had my previous map. I toned all of this down, but I just wanted to make sure you can see what's going on. I'm also going to make an AO map that I may or may not use. So create, again, create a nice AO map, set as AO. Go back to show full material. It kind of added some dark cracks and corners in this. And then the other thing I want to generate is called a smoothness map, which is basically like a roughness or specular map. So I'm going to hit create. It's going to kind of approximate it, set a smoothness. Um, and there we go. We've got a decent looking material. Okay, the last thing to do here that I want to show you, if you do not have a seamless texture, which in this case, you know, the AI spit out something it thought was seamless. I don't think it's perfectly seamless. If I go to cylinder, you can kind of see, up. Oh, there's a little seam going on there. I don't really want that. So this tool also has a way to create seamless patterns. And how you do that is you go to tile maps. And what you can do here is you can basically stretch the X and Y to have this match up a little bit nicer. So let's say I'm gonna stretch this maybe to about there. That way that line is hidden and then the X going to stretch to maybe there. And then there's also this edge fall off feature where it basically blurs that line. So if I like make this way more extreme, you can see I'm blurring that line, which is really nice. And then once you have your tile set up, you can see how it scales down, etc. And so once you have that set up, you just say set maps and it basically reflects through your whole system and now you are ready to export. So the way you do that is you hit save project you choose where you want to lay off this project file and images, it will do so. And then we're going to jump into the renderer of our choice. In this case, it is Octane for Cinema 4D and set this file up with these texture maps. Okay, so as you can see, I've already set this texture map up, but I just wanted to show kind of high level first. I mean, this is pretty cool. I generated an image of roof tiles from an AI program. I literally did nothing except type in it. And then I got a free program and was able to make a series of images that actually intake lighting data. So as you can see, I rotate this sun around. I'm actually getting specular hits on the roof tiles. If I go down towards this object, you can see there's actually distortion happening on the edge of the roof. I'm getting kind of some bumpy tile look going on. There's obviously things you could do better here and maybe something like Substance 3D is a way better route but for a free set of tools, I'd say this is pretty impressive. So if you're interested in how to set this up as an octane material, the way you do that is you basically need to create something called a universal material. So I'm going to go up to materials, create, create a universal material. I'm gonna open that up and I'm not a huge node editor user. I know octane people are probably gonna come after me now. Um, I just find it slightly confusing, but in this case, I find the universal material even more confusing. So I'm going to go into the node editor and here I have just that material. And then what you do is you can bring in those materials from wherever they sit. I have these nice texture materials and I'm going to kind of throw them over to the side here just to keep things slightly organized. And I'll show you a few tips and tricks on how to set this up. Okay, so normal map. Obviously, I just want to put normal map into normal map. And I'll go ahead and throw this onto our roof just so we can see what's going on. And then from there, I want to take our diffuse map. I did make this AO map. I like to do dirt and stuff inside of Octane separately, so I'm actually going to not use my AO map. If you were going to use it in Octane, you probably would put it through a multiply node just so kind of that dark color gets to multiply on top of your diffuse, et cetera. But I'm actually not gonna use that, so I'm just gonna delete it. 
Um, I am going to use obviously my diffuse map. I'm going to take that and just plug it into the albedo, albedo, albino. I don't know what that's called. Um, plugged it in. You can see this is way tiled up up here, but we'll get to that later. And then I'm going to take my smoothness map and I'm going to plug that into roughness. So we got that going on. We're getting a little bit of the shine specular. For your height map or displacement map, you have to do something slightly different inside of Octane. It kind of can't understand this image for some reason. Uh, if you were to just plug it directly in, and you need a few more parameters around displacement for Octane since it can get a little funky. And so what you need to grab is this displacement node. So I'm gonna pull that in. I'm going to tie our texture to the texture spot in the displacement node. In the displacement settings, I'm going to change the level of detail to the size of my texture map. And this is important for Octane to understand this. So I have a 2K texture, I'm gonna drop it down to 2K. Um, and I'm gonna leave it on texture displacement. If you're having trouble with your displacement, try vertex displacement. Sometimes that works a little bit if you have really high res geometry. So then I'm going to take this displacement node, tie it into our displacement. And then you'll see over here, if I were to make this displacement really extreme, you can see now our texture is for the most part working. One note for uh, these images inside of Octane, I'm unsure if this is the same for Redshift, etc. is if you have any colored image, anything with color in it, you should definitely use a gamma of 2.2 and type normal um, because it, it is using a linearized workflow. But if you have any of these black and white images, sometimes that can react a little funky with how you know your roughness material and displacement are set up. So if you have any of these, I would highly suggest you know, clicking on your black and white images, setting the legacy gamma down to one, and then changing the type to float. So same thing for this one. So you could kind of see before I was getting like a really hot specular going on, um, even though that's not what we defined inside of our PBR material maker. So now it's reacting a lot more like what we wanted um, inside of that. And then the other tip, again, this is a node tip, which this is a reason to absolutely use nodes, is obviously this texture is really huge. I don't wanna go inside of the actual texture and start messing with repetitions and length and all that junk. What you can just do really easily is click on your diffuse texture and then click UV transform. It's gonna create a transform node and then take that node and tie it to the transform of all of your other images. So that's the great thing about node workflows. You can use the same exact thing and tie it multiple times and only have one spot you're changing things at. So I have my transform and now I'm gonna take the scale, pull the scale way down. And then I'm actually gonna rotate this I'm gonna rotate this, kind of be more aligned with what I wanted, which was more like this. All right, and there we go. That is how you set this material up. Looks pretty good for generating it out of two free programs. All right, that is pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, a like on this video and subscribing to the channel helps us and goes a really long way. Leave any comments in the comment section below if there's things you want me to explain further or go into detail on, or if there's any questions I can answer in regards to this process. Again, check out Midjourney AI. It's a pretty amazing tool. I think it's gonna become more and more useful to us as artists, and you might as well be on its good side as it takes over the world. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, head on over to the Happy Toolbox. I used a model from our city buildings pack here. Um, it's a nice little walk-up townhouse. So go ahead and check that out if you get a chance. All right, I'll see you next time.